It looks like the rumor mill is in full swing now, as for 2022, we should see a whole lot of new PC hardware coming to the market, such as Nvidia's next-gen Ada Lovelace GPUs, which have been rumored to be some very power-hungry monsters. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. 2022 is going to be a pretty exciting year for PC gamers and hardware enthusiasts. Recently I made a video talking about how we have AMD's Zen 4, Ryzen 7000 CPUs, and Intel's Raptor Lake 13th Gen CPUs to look forward to for that space. So if you're interested in that video, link for it will be in the video description. For this video, I wanted to discuss some interesting information and rumors that have recently surfaced surrounding the NVIDIA's next generation Ada Lovelace RTX 4000 gaming series graphics cards. It honestly feels a bit weird talking about NVIDIA's next gen GPUs, as it doesn't really feel like to me that the RTX 3000 series have been out for almost, what, like 17 or 18 months at this point? I guess the GPU shortage definitely played a big part in that regard, but switching our focus ahead to their next gen GPUs. The architecture that their next gen 4000 series GPUs will be based on is called Ada Lovelace. We don't have a whole lot of info as of now in regards to GPU specs and what kind of advancements the new microarchitecture brings that can improve performance as I feel like a lot of that will be revealed in the coming months. There were however some tidbits of info that copite 7 kimmy who is a very well known hardware leaker shared on Twitter late last year in regards to the top SKU 80102 GPU suggesting that it would have a whopping shader count of 18,432 which is 76% greater than the RTX 3090 resulting in approximately 64 teraflops of peak FP32 performance. And that's just if we were to scale up performance based on the increase in CUDA cores. That's not taking into account other improvements like IPC, performance per watt, memory performance, and more. Along with that, Nvidia will be leveraging TSMC's 5 nanometer node, which is substantially more advanced than their current 8 nanometer process from Samsung that they've been using for the RTX 3000 series. Samsung's 8 nanometer node was really just a tweaked and rebrand of their 10 nanometer node, which wasn't that much better than TSMC. SMC's 12 nanometer node that they used for Turing back in 2018, and that node was really just a rebrand of their 16 nanometer node from 2016. Therefore, with Ampere, Nvidia was already at a considerable disadvantage, and it's why you hear so many hardware enthusiasts say that had Nvidia used TSMC's 7 nanometer for Ampere, they would have been significantly faster than RDNA 2, and AMD just ended up catching a break here. For next gen, though, it looks like Nvidia is going to be getting really serious, and they'll be using that financial horsepower they've got to secure some 5 nanometer wafers from TSMC. A report from DigiTimes Taiwan claims that their next gen Ada Lovelace gaming GPUs will indeed be using TSMC's 5 nanometer node, and that is also the same node that AMD will be using for their next gen RDNA 3 graphics cards as well. So they'll be playing on an even field now when it comes to fabrication process and lithography. As for a release window, you want to take this info with a grain of salt, though it does come from someone who had a decent track record when it comes to these leaks, and that was from Graymon55 on Twitter. They were asked by a user who asked when Lovelace will be hitting the market, and they replied back stating that Lovelace will be available in September. This release window would make sense, as at that point it will be the 2 year mark since Nvidia had released Ampere, and a 2 year GPU cycle is quite typical of Nvidia if we look at you know, the release dates for previous generations. Nothing on pricing, though I expect that we shouldn't be getting our hopes up too high, not if you want to be severely disappointed, that is. With a September release date, that could mean that Nvidia's next-gen RTX 40 series will be landing around the same time, maybe a bit before than when AMD will release RDNA 3, and it pretty much feels like we'll get a repeat of what happened in 2020. Now shifting our discussion away from the release date topic, I wanted to discuss something Graymon55 said as a follow up to that statement, which was that if you plan to buy an 80102 GPU, which could mean an X80 class card or an X90 class card, have a 1500 watt power supply ready for it. At first this sounded absolutely crazy to me because that would mean that these next gen GPUs are going to have a significant increase in their TGP ratings. They further elaborate that while not sure if at the moment whether one model has three TGP ranges or whether it has three models, but the TGP number of the 80102 is 450 watts, 
650 watts, and 850 watts. Of course, this is not the final specification, and there may be some deviation. Copite also chimed in to say that they did hear this rumor as well, though it's 50-50 on whether or not it's actually true. However, if those ranges correlate to each of the 80102 SKUs, that would mean that the RTX 4080 would have a TGP of 450 watts, the 4080 Ti would have a TGP of 650 watts, and the 4090 would have a TGP of 850 watts. It's absolute insanity. This would mean that unless you already had a 1200 or 1600 watt PSU, then you can forget about using a 4090 or 4080 Ti. If the 4080 does have a TGP of 450 watts, you might be able to squeeze by with the 850 watt power supply, but I can easily see Nvidia and AIBs recommending 1000 watt power supplies for that card, and 1600 watt power supplies for the 4080 Ti and 4090. If Nvidia is prepared to bump up the TGP for these GPUs so much, then this basically means that the rest of the segments will also see similar increases, with the 4070 probably having a 300 or 350 watt TGP, I mean, a 37 Ti already exceeds this, so that is quite likely, and the 4060 would have a TGP of up to 300 watts. Remember back in 2016 when Nvidia released a 1060 and it had a 150 watt TDP rating? Now we're talking about entry level or mid range graphics cards requiring a 750 or 850 watt power supply minimum, which is just insanity to me. I mean, even for the top SKU, 1600 watt power supply is something that you talk about when you're running a dual GPU configuration. If these next gen GPUs are really going to be this power hungry, then I suspect a lot of people will be looking at upgrading their power supplies in their PCs, and that's not really a good thing because then it's just going to add more to the cost of whether they're building a new PC or if they're going to be upgrading from their existing GPU. It's just something else to factor in, and you know, 1600 watt, 1200 watt power supplies, they're not cheap. Nonetheless, 850 watts is just absurd. Like, why would this GPU require this much power? Also, what in the world would be required to cool such a monstrosity? I could see the 4080 being just fine with a very chunky air cooler. When overclocked, my RTX 3090 Strix can exceed 450 watts. The cooler does a fine job keeping it, you know, cool, but it sure does get very loud. The same can't be said for the 4080 Ti and 4090, like these GPUs will have to have a liquid cooler attached to them, if that's the case then you know another problem users will have to face is potentially dealing with two radiators if they're already using one for their CPU. Oh and rest in peace ITX users. With such ginormous increases to the power requirements, these cards will have to deliver immense performance improvements to justify it. We'll obviously have to wait and see, and I don't want to get too ahead of myself here, but how terrible would it look if the 4090 is only about 40-50% to 50 faster than the 3090, yet requires over 100% more power. The performance per watt figures would look like an absolute joke. I've made several videos where I undervolted all the Ampere cards I got my hands on, and we saw huge efficiency gains while keeping nearly the same level of performance as stock. And many other users who commented on my videos said they saw the same thing. I have no doubt that a lot of people will be taking the same approach for these next gen graphics cards. I'm now really looking forward to seeing how this will play out. If these rumors do come true, then we'll be seeing a lot of people getting riled up because of the drastic power supply requirements. If AMD doesn't beat Nvidia on performance, but isn't too far behind and they don't require these outrageous PSU specs, then they'll have a very good shot at winning the next gen. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.